season five of Arrow has come to a close and that means it's time to start talking about it. I know for a lot of people this was a really strong return to form and this is kind of a top two favorite seasons for a lot of people. It's not quite that good for me but it was for the most part a good return to form though for me they made a new set of errors and they kept a couple things that I wish they would kind of move past. Just so you know how this review is going to work what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a spoiler free section just a two three minute review of the season my thoughts feelings on it and then I'll go into kind of a walk through of the season my thoughts through all the big major things throughout the whole season and kind of maybe I'll have some thoughts on how they could fix it at the end of this video. So that's where things are going. Before I go into my thoughts, tell me your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let's chime in, get a lively discussion. There's a lot of thoughts. A lot of people really did like this season and I wish I liked it as much as they did, but there's a handful of things they keep doing that I want them to stop doing, but we'll talk about that when, uh, well, as we move forward. With that said, here's kind of my non-spoiler review of the season. Overall, this season was really good in returning to the uh, sense of a team of people trying to stop crime and stop villains and having a sense of heroism to it that's not bogged down by so much Oliver and Felicity dating drama crap. So with that, in the season, Arrow, kind of the key th storylines in it is that Oliver becomes the mayor of the city. He can't do the crime fighting all by himself, so he recruits a new team of people to help him fight crime. And in this, a new villain shows up in town named Prometheus, who seems to have ties to Oliver's past, who wants to take out cops and hurt Oliver personally. And these are kind of our setups themes of the season. The consequences of Oliver's actions while building a new team, while being a mayor and trying to save the city both publicly and in private. And the flashbacks involve Oliver in Russia. Um, in Dolph Lundgren, Ivan Drago appears in those ones. So, kind of overall feelings on it. The flashbacks for me didn't work at all. I if, Like, if they pulled all the flashbacks and threw them out, I didn't like any of that stuff the entire season. There was not one thing in the flashbacks that I was like, that was cool. None of it the entire season. So right off the bat, that's a pretty big knock on the season to say, that's like 10 minutes of every single episode, I would say, I don't want in any of these episodes. It did not help at all. It didn't add anything. And it gets so convoluted at a certain point where Oliver has been away from the island doing all this other stuff that it, it makes all of that less interesting. It's the bad way to do backstory and prequel where everything has some over-the-top explanation. It's so convoluted. So I didn't like any of that stuff that they did with uh, the flashbacks. But as for the main storyline, in general, on paper, the idea of Oliver as the mayor, as a public figure trying to be, <laughs> save the city on two fronts... There's a lot of good storytelling to be done in that. There's a lot of um, just in kind of even with Lance in his struggle to be a good guy while struggling with personal issues. There's a lot of good storytelling stuff that they do with uh, Lance in that. And then the idea of recruiting a new team, that's kind of a mixed bag for me and how that played out. Because then you have Oliver as superhero, you have Oliver as coach, you have Oliver as mayor, you have Oliver as just the guy who interacts with people. So you have too many Olivers that we don't, it feels like he's too scattershot in too many directions by making having to be the coach of a team. As well as the characters in it are a little bit scattershot as to how good some of them are and the direction that they go with some of those storylines. And when, it, when you're like a guy chooses to be a superhero and it's causing his marriage to fall apart it makes the character really unsympathetic to me the fact that he would continue being a superhero and lie to his husband and like things like that that just some of that stuff didn't quite work to me with where the plot lines go and um the, the characters that they added in and then the prometheus plot line had the same issues as it felt that we're having on flash this season of a, a main big bad for the season that's just overplayed it went on too long uh, and so then the tension and the intrigue surrounding the character gets lost because there's, it's, I mean, he shows up in episode one and it's not resolved until the last scene of the, the finale. And so then, I mean, it's the full season of this one character that they can't stop. And so there's a certain, you get bogged down and you start going, okay, are these guys incompetent? Why can't they stop this guy? Like what, what's going on? So those are my feelings on it. There's a lot of things that were a really nice return to form in that there's some good, a lot of good return with Oliver and Felicity. Uh, once the team got into its stride, all the early stuff where he's having to coach them, not so great. But once they find their stride, there's some good moments in there that I really liked. And it, parts of it with Prometheus were good. Once again, much like Flash Season 3, the execution of some good ideas, that's where the problem really lies. So that's my non-spoilery take on it. 
good. It's not the worst by far. It's not the best by far. It's dead in the middle. I think this is my third favorite of the five seasons. Um, so much better than the previous two. Not nearly as good as the first two for me where things stand with it. So let's just kind of walk through the season and do kind of a spoilery talk about some of this stuff and kind of walk through the season. So it starts off, Oliver is the mayor of the city. It's about five months after the previous season. And Diggle and Felicity are like, you got to recruit a new team of people. And so he, he recruits several different people. And from the get-go, none of these people, none of these are strong characters to me. They're all adequate to sometimes obnoxious wild dog is pretty obnoxious to me as a character um but not bad along the same times oliver kills some people again so speedy quits the team and this establishes the theme of the season which is the consequences of what oliver is doing that he's been killing people and obviously this is the storyline that plays throughout the whole thing that prometheus is out to make a point to him about and so then we recruit this new team of people and there was a couple episodes there i almost quit the show there's one episode, I think it's episode three or four, where he's trying to teach the new people and try and be the, their coach. And so he puts them in this exercise where they're supposed to be working. And he's just like yelling at them, try harder, try harder. And Felicity's like, you can't, you can't treat him like this. You can't just yell at him like this. And I was watching it like, this is horrible. And then Oliver actually says, do you know the purpose of the exercise? It's to learn to work together. And I was watching it like, oh no. If anyone didn't know the purpose of this episode uh, 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 exercise was to teach them to work together, they're a moron. Obviously, that's what he's trying to do because they're all trying to do it by themselves. And so they needed to work together. And I was like, this is horrible. This is terrible writing. This, this is a terrible direction to take things that puts everyone in a bad light. This is not good storytelling. And then they kept going back to these conversations about trust and lies in all of it, all of the more, and this is one of the things that just bugs me to no end about the show, is the morality of the show is that of a, a high schooler, a 15-year-old, not even a mature high school, like an immature high schooler whose idea of trust is, well, we're family, you're supposed to trust me. We're in love, you're supposed to trust me. And that's not how trust works. You're trusted because you're trustworthy. You behave in a consistent manner and you tell things honestly and therefore I can trust what you're saying is true and you will do what you're saying you're going to do and you will follow through on things. That's what trustworthy means. Trustworthy isn't we're family, therefore I have to believe you're going to do things. And that's like the morality of the show throughout the whole thing. And everyone lies, everyone's untrustworthy. And then they lecture other people on being trustworthy. And you get a bunch of those lectures. I almost quit. You can check this channel. I have a rant I did a while back on like, I think I'm done with Arrow. Because it keeps going back to this juvenile uh, understanding of truth, lies, and trustworthiness. And then the season started to pick up a little bit for me, around eight-ish, kind of the middle of the season, started to find its groove a little bit more. So I stuck with it and kind of liked it once Oliver stopped doing these lectures and the team kind of got into their groove a little bit more. And uh, there's some things in there in the middle I didn't like. There's a gun control episode that thought, it just feels out of place to me that to do something like that on a show like this for the simple fact of the matter of the premise of this show is a guy with a bow and arrow that kills people without the law, without not provocated him proactively seeking out bad guys with his bow and arrow and killing them has been good for the city. Now there's consequences to it, but that's been good for the city that a guy with his bow and arrow... And the, the conversation in our culture right now that they're kind of addressing is the, like, we have this idea of one side thinks, hey, a good guy with a gun can stop bad guys with a gun. That's the actual narrative of the show, except it's a bow and arrow. Even, I guess, Wild Dog has guns. Diggle has a gun. The idea of a good guy with a gun is the central premise of this TV show. That's the whole idea of it which is not the actual politics of the people creating the show. So they're trying to tackle an issue where they themselves don't line up with the politics of their show, which is fine because it's a fantasy show. No one thinks that great, like some rich guy should be running with a bow and arrow killing people. It's a fantasy show. But when you try and tackle a real issue on a show where the message, like the actual worldview of the show is not your worldview, you, it doesn't work. So it was a little bit odd. I didn't hate the episode or anything, but it has handled actually fairly balanced considering the actual politics of the writers of the show. But the episode itself, trying to tackle stuff like this, I thought they were stepping out of their bounds of what they can appropriately do. 
But by this point in time in the season, this whole Prometheus storyline starts to get bogged down. Like, who's Prometheus? We're still asking. 12 episodes later, we're still asking, who is Prometheus? We're still trying to figure this out. And then they reveal that it's Adrian. They reveal Adrian's the guy all along. And instantly, Adrian starts to suck. Up to this point in time, I was like, yeah, I kind of like Adrian on the show. And the actor's doing an adequate job. As soon as this actor becomes villain Prometheus, he sucks. I didn't think he's good as Prometheus once he's the villain and he's like, Oliver, you're, we're going to find out why you really do all this. Oliver, do you really think that I didn't think about that in advance? And he says everything so smug and he has the way he's written, he's this brilliant mastermind that has everything figured out. But the actor doesn't pull that off. And it's not really written in a way that would pull that off. So like you watch any Sherlock Holmes thing. And when you discover how Sherlock Holmes is putting it all together, it all feels right. You can see how Sherlock Holmes is like pulling this off. You can see Robert Downey Jr. thinking through what he's doing. And he comes off like this mastermind that's always ahead of people and he's thinking. Prometheus comes off like this smug guy that everything magically comes together his way. He doesn't come off like this brilliant guy that's thinking and out working people. We're not seeing how he's figuring all this stuff out. We don't know why he's so brilliant. We don't know why he's a mastermind. He's just always five steps ahead of everyone else. And at a certain point in time, when you make him just that magically brilliant that can figure everything out, it like I just I, my suspension of this disbelief doesn't work anymore. When we're all the way up to the finale of the show, and he just m always has everything figured out, he's always so far ahead, and he's put bombs everywhere, and he's, he's a master at everything, he's just not interesting. And the actor absolutely cannot pull off this sort of person. There's there's actors that when you see them thinking, you can see them thinking and you just immediately go, oh, that guy's smart. That guy's figuring things out. This guy's just smug and just comes off like a jerk. Does not have anything depth to tour at, at all. As well as they don't give him... It's like Oliver wronged him and therefore he just switches into I'm going to get him back and I'm evil mode and you never actually sympathize with his worldview of why he's doing so many horrible things as payback. You never get like really feel Oliver was that bad to warrant what this guy's doing. Therefore, the tension that could be there if he was better written, if we got a better like even if they changed up the the way they did flashbacks and so with the some the way the story tied into it, maybe Prometheus doesn't tie back to the Green Arrow days, but he goes back to what we were seeing in Russia and the flashbacks of him in Russia are Oliver as essentially a sociopath just viciously killing people and kills lots of people tied to this guy. And so we're rooting for Prometheus to kill Oliver because of what we're seeing in all these flashbacks. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself, but um, something But you, where you would actually be like, Prometheus is doing horrible things now because Oliver did horrible things before. But I I didn't feel that. You, you Like you could see what... Like, they tried to do it, but they didn't go far enough to actually make Oliver come off like a monster. So then eventually we had the episode where um, Prometheus captures Oliver and we reveal that Oliver actually likes to kill people and he gets a certain enjoyment out of it, which is supposed to be a big reveal, but it doesn't doesn't seem like that big of a real reveal because um, Oliver never seemed all that broken hearted about killing people. So it uh, doesn't seem too crazy. And as much as if it's a big reveal, it's kind of out of nowhere. Um, and so then it, it feels a little bit retconny, not not fully, but a little bit of kind of like, okay, now we're reinterpreting everything that came before in a way that isn't quite powerful enough. So they have one episode then where Oliver breaks up the team. Now this, once if the season had been paced out better, you could have Oliver quit and do some stuff with this, but there's only one episode where he quits the team, then he gets everybody back together, and we're back to battling people once again. And um, then it, it goes into the final few episodes, and I thought they were quite good as they start tracking him down. We go to Lian Yu, we get to the finale of the leading up in our flashbacks all the way up to the first scene of the show. Uh, the finale ends with an actual absolute cliffhanger where maybe the whole team is blown to pieces. They weren't blown to pieces. There's no chance that happened. But in the ep this finale, they, like, they add bad Deathstroke back in, and you think, why didn't we add Deathstroke back in a while ago? We had, like, 12 episodes in there in the middle where it just seemed like Prometheus is at it again. They try and stop him. They fail to stop him. Chase is ahead of... Or Adrian is ahead of them. One step the whole way... They did re the same storylines for like 12 episodes straight, and then you go, we get something interesting that warrants more episodes. You go, why didn't we bring Deathstroke in three, four episodes sooner and play out these things in the finale longer. The best stuff, some of the best stuff of the season comes there at the end. 
And it was interesting, like the mirror crew was weighing off. And so then Deathstroke is thinking more clearly. And so then do we trust him? Do we not trust him? That's an episode of, of, of itself. That's a storyline that I want more time on. But it's crammed into this finale where we have to tie up the season and set up the next season. Or set up the cliffhanger, at least. I don't know if we're setting up the next season, but we do set up a cliffhanger. So, once again, very similar sorts of criticisms to my issues that I had with the Flash this season. Of the storylines were just uneven. The idea of them, the themes of them, the, of the synopsis of it, all good. The right direction. The actual execution was uneven. Like I don't know if they had, they, I don't know how much they mapped it out. But everything that there was a lot of things that seemed really stretched out. In particular, with the big bad guy stories, and then specific storylines in the middle that felt like I wanted more time on. So with all that said, here's kind of my thoughts on how they could have changed things up a little bit. And that's to say to have maybe somewhat doing what they did with Deathstroke, perhaps a little bit. Um, in this season of have the flashbacks then tie into the big reveal of the, who, who the villain is. And perhaps you have two Prometheus. Instead of having one guy, it's kind of two guys. That's why he's able to do some of this stuff. And one of them is Adrian. And one of them's from the flashbacks. And so then you have a guy like Adrian who, same exact story, give him the same story. But then have a guy in the flashbacks, uh, and Adrian's unreasonable. His, his level of anger is very personal, but it doesn't match some of the depths of the how angry he is. And then you have this guy from the flashbacks that's fully justified. That we see Oliver in these flashbacks truly as a monster doing horrible things because he thinks he's doing the right thing. We have an actual tension to where sometimes there's two violent groups of people that thinks the other guys are bad. And so they do horrible things to the other side and both sides are, are not right. And they're both doing really bad things for personal reasons. And you make that the Russia storyline. And so as soon as it's revealed, oh, oh, there's two Prometheus, there's not one. And th that's kind of our big reveal in all of this. And then we're like, all of those flashbacks have so much weight now. And we've seen Oliver horrible. And it reframes kind of, and maybe there's a redemption side a little bit in, in the, the backstory that leads to him like, I've done horrible things. I need to go back to my city and make things right. I've become the person I hate. I'm going to save the city like my dad wanted me. I'm going to be the person he wanted me to be. And that's where the flashbacks kind of end after we've seen him be a really bad guy. And he's still paying a redemption for that now with Prometheus is returning. And I think that creates a tension to it. And you absolutely want this Prometheus to get back at the guy that he knew from five years before, but that's not the guy he is anymore. And I think that creates a much better tension. Likewise, all of the lectures of trust and all that stuff, get rid of all of it. Uh, don't, don't have any of that stuff. Don't have Oliver as the head of the team. Don't have him as the coach to the new recruits. Make Diggle the head of the new recruits and actually make him the boss of Oliver in the world of superhero stuff. It's essentially Felicity as the, and Diggle is the people running that. Oliver's just like the star of the team, but he's not the coach of the team. He's the quarterback that's the, can give the rally to the guys, but he's not the coach. Diggle's the coach. And so then you can have some, some of those storylines of building up the team, but you have Diggle doing it, not Oliver, that it puts Oliver in such a weird role and it doesn't make any sense. He doesn't have any skills in that regard. He was on an island by himself for... Actually, he wasn't on by himself because I've seen the flashbacks. He was there doing other places. He wasn't there for five years. But he's this loner that's drifted from place to place. He's not a guy that builds teams. So you do things like that and it fits a little bit better. It comes together a little bit better in the way they would tell the story. That's my take on some changes I think they could have done that would have made for a better season. Oh, and then the last one, what I said before. Have Deathstroke introduced at like episode 18 or something like that. Uh, actually, there was like a month-long break in this season where we skipped over like the month of March and then we did our final four or five episodes coming back in April. And then it came back to like this really dull episode where not much happened. It was like, really? That's what we came back to? Have the episode where they come back and it's the Deathstroke episode. And they have to, they bring Deathstroke in to try and help them and the Mirror Crew and all sorts of stuff like this worn off. And so Oliver's starting to trust him. No one else trusts him. And maybe he gets kind of arrested again and or something like that. So they have to break him out at the end. Of, something like that. So we all this stuff about do we trust him happens earlier. We get an episode dedicated to him. So when he comes back in the finale, it's just all payoff stuff. All we really like him. 
And likewise, when there's kind of twists and turns back and forth, is he good, is he bad, in that episode, it feels like we've had four episodes of learning to trust him. So then when it seems like maybe he betrays them, there's a lot more weight to that. So that's my take on what this season should have looked like. That's my take on the spoilers walking through the season. How about you? Tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section. I'd love to hear your feedback on it. Get a lively discussion going on. Also, in a couple of days, I'm going to, or maybe tomorrow, I don't know when it'll come out, I'm going to rank all five seasons of Arrow and give my quick kind of thoughts on them and why I put them where I do. Spark some discussion, so be ready for that. It's coming up very shortly. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. Do movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions. I got this thing called Masters of Movie Trivia where me and some other YouTubers compete in movie trivia. That's where the name comes from, and we love it if you would check that out. And as always, thank you for watching.